there are things that I want to talk about today, but I wish you could write some of this down. Those of you that have a pen and a paper or can get it, I, you, you really need to write these, these uh, different uh, ways that God speaks to his people. For Christians that are truly wanting God, um, we, uh, we are constantly seeking the Lord to be led by God. And is there anybody here that doesn't seek God doesn't seek him in any way to be led by him. I just don't believe you're going to raise... You're, all right, there's one... No. <laughs> but we constantly seek the Lord. Lord, should I work here? Lord, should I go there? You know, he says go into all the world. You can't get to all the countries in the world, okay? All right, so you want to know what country I need to go to or what should I do? How do I follow Jesus? And there are 10 ways that God speaks to his people. Number one is by prophecy, okay? Thus saith the Lord, that the inspiration comes upon you to speak out, okay? He does this through other people. We're going to go over that scripture. Tongues and interpretation of tongues. That's another way that God uh, speaks to his people. And if you don't pray in tongues or you don't have the, inter the, the supernatural gift of being able to interpret that, you need, we're going to show you something here today, okay? A still small voice. Um, Elijah, that in, when he was at the mouth of the cave, it wasn't in the whirlwind, it wasn't in, it wasn't in the fire, but it was a still small voice, amen? So he speaks very softly inside of you. And I, I would say, and that's number three. How close do you need to be to Jesus when he whispers? How close do you need to be to one another when he whispers? Pretty close. Amen? People, your wife or your husband don't always holler at you. They whisper sometimes, and that's how close you to be. It's a still, small voice, so that's how close you need to be all the time. Amen? All right, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, an audible voice we, we're going to give you scriptures on that where God speaks out and we've heard that and sometimes we kind of scoff at that what do you mean God spoke to you where you could hear it with your audible ear well I'm going to give you scriptures that that's true so if there's anybody here that feels like hey I did hear God one time do that lead me that, that way hey that's out of the Bible so let's believe it amen um, by angels that's number five, by angels. Number six, by visions. God leads us by visions. God shows you some things. He talks to his people by visions. Number seven, by dreams. And number eight, by impressions. It's not a voice but it's impressed upon you. Amen? And that brings me to a, a, a verse where it says that the Spirit of God prays through us with unctions, impressions that cannot be uttered. That he prays through you. Why would he have to pray through you if he can pray by himself? He uses you. Amen? He uses you. So, so as I was trying to put some of this together, I went into 1 Timothy. Go to 1 Timothy 4.14, okay? Y'all there? 1 Timothy 4.14, it says, Neglect not the gift. Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given unto thee by prophecy Timothy wouldn't have had a clue what his gift was unless it was number one given to him and told to him what it was with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery or the elders I have to say this. 
How many people declare that they have a gift and they've never had the leaders of the church, if you can find leaders in the church that even have that ability to do it, that the, that the hands were laid on them and that they were given direction and told what to do and told what their gift was. A lot of people think they have a gift and how many know that we've listened to a lot of preachers that think they're preachers and they're not? Amen. Amen. They're just not. That they're tares sent by Satan to deceive the flocks of God. But apart from that, we look and we see Timothy was told, don't neglect the gift that was given to you by the laying on of hands and was told to you what gift you have. Isn't that real direction? You know, a lot of people say, I have a gift. And I've known people that had a gift. They said, I, I know what's going on in your life. Oh, well, is it, is it from the Lord or is it a spirit of divination that's working in you? Because it worked in your dad and your grandma too. I've had people that, that said they had a gift and they, they knew what shirt I was going to wear. And I have to just say this, God don't do that. That isn't the Lord, but they knew it was God, but their grandma played with tarot cards, and they confessed Jesus as the Lord and even sang songs in the church about Jesus. But they had a spirit of divination working through them. Don't you think that the saints today need to be governed a little bit by the true elders of the church? Don't you think that the elders, uh, the, the, that the church needs true elders of the church that can pray over people and give them direction? Was not Barnabas and Saul told what to do by the elders of the church that prayed over them and gave them direction what to do? In Acts 13, 1, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, and the Holy Ghost said unto them, separate unto me. Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them I want you to know what the elders were doing they were fasting and praying for somebody else that that was their job to fast and pray and send Barnabas and Saul and thousands of others out to do what needed to be done where's that today in the church it needs to be. What we have is sheep running here and there and says, I think I got a gift. What do you mean you think you got a gift? You should be told by the church, don't neglect your gift. And how many people of the church lay down their gift that need to be taken up and encouraged and everybody knows what their gift is. God gives direction by prophecy. In Acts 11, 20 said, 7, Agabus stood up and prophesied by the Spirit that there should be a great drought throughout all the world, that's the land, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Acts 11, 27, God gives direction like that through prophecy. So if somebody tells you, I just really, I, I feel like the Lord is saying this, there's going to be this or that or a drought. Yeah, you can judge the prophecy, but the drought never came for quite a while. I heard it, came, it was 10 years before the drought hit, but it was for Jerusalem to store up food. That was prophesied by this man, Agabus. So God leads us, speaks to us through prophecy. I want you to go into 1 Corinthians. I want to just bring some things to light. You said, oh, I've read that before. Eh, I've read it also, and I want to just bring some things to light. Just how God wants to use us, and that we have one call in our life. We have different administrations of the Spirit maybe, but we got a call to serve Jesus Christ. We got a call to walk with the Lord. We'll go into tongues and interpretation of tongues. So you see, I kind of backed up the prophecy. I got eight to go through. Haven't got a lot of time. 
Now he says, now concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you to be ignorant. How many know that the church is kind of ignorant today about the supernatural moves of the Spirit of God? Amen? And Paul says, I know you were Gentiles and you're carried away with all types of sin, but I want you to understand here that there is one God and one Spirit, and these are the different administrations of the Spirit. There are diversities of the Spirit of God, but it is the same Lord that works all in all, because they believed in a lot of different gods. There are different operations, but it's the same God that worketh all in all. Now the manifestation of the Spirit is given to, in verse 7, this is 12, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. It is the manifestation, in other words, the Spirit wants to work through you, the manifestation of the Spirit, that you'd be able to tell what it is that says, man, that Spirit is working through, the Spirit of God is working through this man, is given to every man, everybody say every man, every man. to profit the other person. To profit the other person. Amen. You're living your spiritual life for the other person. It isn't just the preachers that are living their life, but you're living your, your life for the other person next to you. And you have a gift. There's a gift somewhere that's supernatural that's going to aid that person next to you. So you're living your life for somebody else. When we... We say, what are the needs? What are the needs here today? There was, and we do, we have needs in the natural, but I really believe that if we would pray for the needs, for our need, and this is our need, that we would be spiritual to be able to help the person next to us, spiritual enough to be able to help the Christian next to us, He's serving the Lord, but he's going, you know, he's serving him by his own will and going in his own direction, and he just don't know. It's kind of like Paul says, have you received the Holy Ghost now that you are a Christian? And, he's, and they go, we don't even know that there is a Holy Ghost. Nobody ever said anything about the Holy Ghost. So how many know that Christians be, they can be ignorant of what the, the different administrations of the Holy Spirit? He says, for one is given by the Spirit, a spirit of wisdom, another one, a word of knowledge, and another, and by faith, the same Spirit, and another, the gifts of healings, and another, the working of miracles, and another, here we are, prophecy. So we should be having some prophecy going on as well as healing, right? We pray for people. To another, discerning of spirits, to be able to decide if it is the devil, what kind of spirit is it? If, it, if they're claiming it's God, shouldn't somebody have discernment to the point that they can go, that is God. That is God. You know, wouldn't it be nice if the Pharisees could have had that working in their life, if they would have just been a little less proud when Jesus spit on the tongue of the guy, and bang, he was able to start talking? <laughs> I tell you what, Pat Green started spitting, spitting on people's tongues. I'm going to be checking in with God. Lord, I know they're talking. Bill starts putting his fingers in people's ears. Surely you can hear now with all the wax on my fingers. But that miracles would be happening. Wouldn't you have to say, Lord, I checked it. surely it must be the Lord, right? It must be. Or is it? We need discernment, Right? Some guy with flamboyant words gives you a great sermon. You go, oh, I just love that guy, but the way he puts it together. And Paul says, I came now with enticing words, but that your faith would lie in the power of the Holy Ghost. I didn't speak with men's wisdom, but I spoke, spoke by the power of the Holy Ghost. I was in fear and trembling when I came to you, and I didn't know anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified. But man likes to hear those big words and say, what does that mean? It's like, really? Is that where God's at? Is that where God's at? Now, discerning of spirits, and another, diverse kinds of tongues, and another, the interpretation of tongues. Isn't it something that possibly is needed in the church today? 
Or has it been cast out by the craftiness of Satan? In the last days, there'll be a grave falling away. Surely it's happened in the spirit already before we even deny that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Now Paul says in 14.1, follow after charity, but he says, but desire spiritual gifts. Should that really be once we got the love thing down a little bit? Shouldn't we be, be praying with that? I need the spiritual gift that you've called me to somehow, some way, Lord make a way. But what are we praying for? Tires on our car, a new home or a different home, or food that next day when Jesus says, desire spiritual gifts and put your whole heart in it. That I need to be able to be used, God, with a spiritual gift and whatever it is that you would use me. Lots of times we like to hang our hat on the natural gift that God said we were born with, but I don't see that anywhere here. Some people are able just to draw pictures and um, just do uh, many different things, maybe even carpenter work and this and that, and it isn't that God can't use you there, but what's your supernatural gift? That you would be able to help the body of Christ when it falls upon you or it rises up within you. I think our prayer should be, God, he says desire spiritual gifts, and I think we ought to be obedient to the word of God. Amen? Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, let us go on to perfection, not laying the groundwork again with unprofitable works. Isn't that what it says in Hebrews? Let us go on to perfection. What's the perfection in you? Well, it's Jesus Christ. Yeah, O oh, religious one. But I'm going to tell you what it is also. It is the gifts that the Spirit of God wants to work through you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, you got churches that are off the wall. You got churches that are bonkers. They play with snakes. All right. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. What's prophecy? Well, he's talking about it. He that speaks in an unknown tongue. So it's like you're able to speak out, thus saith the Lord, without speaking out in tongues and depending on somebody else to interpret it. Why did Paul say that it's just better that you speak out? Because now we got to involve two people in the church and man, when you got to get two people that's spiritual, Paul says, just pray for one. <laughs> that's really, that's what he's saying. Not that in the interpretation can't be a direct and a, and a on, on the target terp interpretation, but that now you got to involve two people in the church to be spiritual. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men. And I brought this up. When you go to any kind of prayer meeting and people are speaking in tongues, speaking to one another, just get out. They're speaking to one another and they're shaking their head. Yeah, and, they, and they're speaking, just, it's off the wall. I was in one of those meetings one time and I just looked at it. I was young in the Lord and I go, wow, I've never seen such a thing. Learn later. Hey, I read my scripture. But you don't speak unto men, you speak unto God, for no man understands him how a bit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he that prophesies speaks unto men to edification, exhortation. In other words, the end part is done. They speak it. So what are you supposed to do? Prophesy that you are able, no, seek God that you're able to prophesy. Desire that you be able to prophesy. Desire that you're able to get a word from the Lord because some people really need direction. Some people really need direction. Barnabas and Saul did have no idea that they were to go to Antioch. They had no idea they were to go there until they were told to go there by the Spirit of God. And the elders fasted before they even laid hands on them. But notice, they laid hands on them because they had something in themselves to give to somebody else. I think the church is crippled because the elders, is, they have nothing inside of themselves. Because they spend all their time doing what they want to do and they're just showing up and all it is is a tag and a place for them to say, well, I'm an elder of the church. Why? Oh, I give more than anybody else. Not that they're spiritual. And you say, wow, you speak pretty tough. I had those elders pray on me once before I, was, I knew up from down and nothing, nothing. There was no presence of God. There was nothing. There was no healing. There was nothing, 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 nothing. 
Amen. But he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but that he that would prophesy edifies the church. You say, oh, I don't need tongues. I don't need that. Because you're so depressed all the time, that's why you need tongues. It edifies you. It brings you up. Not only that, Paul says down here, he says, if I speak in tongues, I'll speak with the understanding. Oh, I pray, God, that you would give me the understanding of what I'm saying that I myself would be edified, that when I pray in tongues that I would know what I was saying. Isn't that what Paul says? He says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, that's tongues, all right, something that's not common, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Paul says it is important. I was told this morning, and I didn't even, I didn't even ask this person about this, and we were, they, would, they told me, they says, there has been a study done how they can see which part of the brain is activated when you think about stuff in the frontal part. They said this, that when, a, when they've taken Christians that had the gift of speaking in tongues, and when they're praying in tongues, there is no activity in their brain. That it would be if you were speaking in your prayer language or, to, or, or thinking about something to do. There is no activity in the brain as they're speaking in tongues, and it totally puzzles them. And I told, I told this person, I says, isn't that amazing? Because I found out years ago when I'm praying in tongues, I can read the Bible in English. I can read it in my head because my spirit prayeth. But Paul says, but your understanding is unfruitful. And that's, you really need to have your understanding in it too. He says, I would that you would all speak in tongues. But he says, we need the understanding too. So he says, what should I do then? He says, well, I'll pray in tongues, and I will pray with the understanding. In other words, I will get it interpreted. Didn't he talk about interpretation? Isn't that one of the gifts of interpretation? Wouldn't it be great as you're praying with other people and somebody's praying in tongues and another person comes up and says, I know exactly what you're saying. This is what you're praying. You know, you, you hear those people. You know, whatever. The, whatever is going on. And that the person that has the interpretation that they, they would know, they would know, and they said, I don't know if you understand, and a lot of people don't understand in their prayer language what they're saying, because they're not seeking to have their understanding enlightened, which they really should, we really should, but if nothing else, that we'd have somebody to be able to interpret what we are saying, and that would edify the person and say, do you know what you're saying? This is what you are saying. I find it really hard that we should have to go to Hungary if we, we speak Hungarian, that we got to go over there to get interpretation of our language. But I will say this, I've thought on this, and I know that there are hundreds of languages in the world. Why couldn't somebody that prays in tongues pray that in a software that is able to tell them this is what you're saying and this is the language you're talking. What do you think about the CIA if they heard something say, track that language down? You think they're going to go around town? Hey, listen to this. You recognize it at all. Or would they get on the computer and look it up and said, here it is. Doesn't it stand to reason? Maybe in this time, when we can break the Bible codes and do different things that people are claiming with computers, maybe it is because of the lack of interpretation in the church, maybe God will help us in other avenues until the church picks it up. Right? How important is it? Well, I think it's important that you let God pray through you and that you would hear God, what he has to say. So Paul says, I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. And I will sing in the Spirit and I will know what I'm singing in the Spirit. That's what he's talking about because he's talking about interpretation. He's talking about interpreting what is being said in this whole verse. And he says, you need to you need to pray that you understand what you're being told. And not only that, you need, you need direction through prophecy. Paul says in 18, I thank God I speak with tongues more than y'all. And it's so talked against, but, but I will say this, it's so like first base. You get the gift of speaking in tongues, and what are you supposed to ask for? What am I saying, God? I would pray this, God. As I sought 
the gift to be able to speak in tongues. I'm seeking what I am saying too. Just as hard as that. And a lot of people, I will ask them, well, you got tongues some, some months ago. How's it going with you? Well, I, I, you laid the gift down, didn't you? You didn't seek it anymore. And you didn't seek to see what you were talking about. And see, that's the problem with the church. That's why there's no direction in the church and no elders that can prophesy over people and give them a clue what their call is. Isn't that a shame? Wouldn't you say that's a shame? I would say it's a shame. Well, pastor, have you prayed in tongues with the understanding? Yes, I have. Do I all the time? No. And I'm guilty as anyone else. I don't seek God for the enlightenment of what I'm praying. I think we would, we would truly be, uh, would you like to hear Jesus pray? Hey, how do you pray, Jesus? You praying for tires in your car? You praying, you praying for, for, for this and that? And Jesus says, no, I'm not. Those things come freely. They're freely come to me. I'm praying what needs to be prayed right now. But what do we seek? Oh, God, help me here, help me there. Instead of, God, I got to be you. And where's the supernatural gift at? Well, brother, I wash cars for a living, and that's what God has me doing for saying. I don't see that anywhere in the Bible. I know good works and stuff like that, but that's not supernatural. That's in the natural. Okay? So anyway, I'm out of time. But we're going to keep on going. You need, you need Jesus Christ. You're going to have to seek God in this. You're going to have to seek God in this if you're going to get this. You're going to have to desire a spiritual, your spiritual gift. Not the person next to you, but your spiritual gift. What good is it if everybody's a carpenter and we have no decorators on the inside of the house, right? We need the decorators too. We need all different administrations. Amen? Make Jesus Christ your Lord. Now, I just want to shove through this a little bit. So we got tongues, interpretation tongues. Do you understand how important just that gift is? Do you understand how important that gift is? That people that would be praying and say, I can pray in tongues. I have no idea what I'm saying. Wouldn't you desire somebody to get on the bandwagon and say, could you please interpret this? If it is from God, interpret it. So I don't have to run to my computer and talk into it and see if I can scramble it out. And isn't it supposed to be interpreted by the church? Oh, yes, brother, three or more, and if you, if you speak in tongues three times, uh, stop if there isn't anybody to interpret. You know what? I would, if it's truly the Lord and somebody speaks three times and there is no interpretation, the church ought to hang its head and cry, oh Lord, what has happened to us? That we don't have somebody in the crowd that can say, thus saith the Lord, and it be right on. Boom, 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 boom. But what we want to claim is because we're not spiritual, we want to claim that it all passed away and that doesn't exist today. Shame on the church for claiming that God changes. Us, we call ourselves Pentecostal, full gospel. I don't know what we call ourselves. I don't know what you call yourself. But we're no big deal either. We need to push in. We need to ask God. Our desire is down and our desires are somewhere else. Are they not? Honey, when's that roast going to be done? Still small voice, I told you in 1 Kings 19.12. So we know that that works, and I think a lot of people operate in that. Audible voices. Paul on the road to Damascus. Remember that? 
truly was. Even the other guys heard it. We heard a voice, but we didn't see anything. And then Paul got up and he couldn't see. And then he said, take me to Damascus, where all the fighting is going on now. Jesus gets baptized. He comes up out of the water. And what do they hear? Spirit of, Spirit of God comes down on them. They hear a voice from heaven. This is my son who I'm well pleased in. They all heard it. Some said, oh, it thundered. Hey, knucklehead. Didn't thunder, it was God. <laughs> really? How spiritual is that? Thundered. Well, maybe to him it sounded like thunder, but it was God. So, audible voices, not out of the question. So when somebody says, I actually heard the Lord, let us not scoff at that. I, just, I don't know, I just feel like the Lord's leading me. Let's not scoff at that, say yeah. If somebody speaks in tongues, let's not scoff at that. Or should we? Maybe the leading, you just feel led. Maybe that's accepted today because that's such a personal thing. Should it be personal? Or maybe you ought to tell people how you're led. How you're led. I don't know. How did you be led? Somebody would ask you, how are you led? I'll tell you how I'm led. And this is got how I feel at different times. And you give them your two cents and they go, you know, that happens with me. And I was wondering if it was God or not. Isn't that really kind of what's needed today? But we keep it all shut up. One person said, said hey, do you, do you speak in tongues? Yeah, I do. And it's just a personal thing. Oh, get out of here. Yeah, it's so personal that you don't let anybody hear it. You don't let anybody operate with you in it. And it's all just a you deal. It is for everybody. Amen. And we need everything working if possible. We want miracles, but we shut the mouth of God. Can okay, I say this again? We want miracles, but we shut the mouth of God. Just heal me. I don't know that I, I want to hear anyone speak, and you speak through anyone in tongues. Not only that, I'm not just not sure about, well, but you'll take the healing, won't you? Oh, yes, brother. Yeah. Are we not biased for our own gain? And notice what, the, what, the, what Paul said, this is for everybody else. I have to say this, you know, people declare what's going to happen and they write books and this and that and they make millions of dollars off what God gave them. Are you saying they shouldn't? I don't know, but I'm going to tell you this little one. Remember Eli uh, Elijah, I think, Elijah and the, and the, um, I think it was the Syrian captain that came to him and he was all full of leprosy and he says, hey, uh, can God heal me? And he says, God can heal you. Go wash in the Jordan. He, and he, uh, he's scoffing, having a hard time over that. And uh, his captain said, you know what? If he asked you to do a hard thing, you'd do it. And so once he went into the Jordan, he was totally cleansed. He was totally cleansed. And, uh, and he went back and he wanted to give the prophet some money. And what did the prophet say? You can't buy me and it's not for sale. Just go away. God takes care of me. Amen. Well, I want to pay you some money. You ever hear anybody today doing that? That's big time. Now they're raking it in. Not putting it down that it never can be the Lord, but I'm saying there's a lot of it going on today. This prophet says, no, I don't want your money. But what did his helper do, his servant? He ran after him and says, my master has changed his mind. Give me the money. And how many know that that man was cursed in every generation after him? Ooh, ooh. And the prophet saw what he was doing. How would you like to have that gift to help the church. I have a vision once in a while, but not very often. But when I do, I know it's God. Do we need that? 
we sure do. By angels, Philip, angels will, will how, this is different ways God can lead you. By angels, yeah? Remember the, the uh, Philip and the eunuch? And the angel appeared, spoke to him, and he says the angel of the Lord spoke to him and said, go south into Gaza. You hear those words, Gaza, still? Hey, Gaza, Gaza Strip. <laughs> Moving the Jews out of there, what's... Yeah, yeah, go to Gaza and you'll, see, you'll find a guy reading out Isaiah. Show him, tell him what it means and bring him to the Lord. An angel, so an angel can lead. Yeah, I want to I wanna say this. If one of us said, there was an angel that gave me direction, wouldn't we all, let's just be honest, I'm going to mention names. Jane Maddox. She says, an angel appeared to me and told me what direction to go. go. Really, Jane? And what did he say? Well, he said this and this and this. Angel don't appear to me. Why would an angel appear to you? Wouldn't that be the attitude of some people? Really, Jane? And how tall was he? Was he six foot? Because we know that they're, oh, wait a minute, they're, they do get taller than that. Won't we try to maybe try to prove, prove her wrong? Won't we try to take away, and then she'd walk away saying, golly, was that God or wasn't it God? I know he told me. And we were right by the campfire out of Bill's place. And he told me. And then the angel went up in the fire and he was gone. Jane. So Jane would say, she would have to say, it's okay that I use your name. Jane would say, yeah, but it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. That the angel came to a woman and a man and said, yeah, you haven't had a child, but you're going to have a child. Samson, wasn't it Samson? Sure, I think it was. It was Samson. And they told him, you're going to have a, a child, and he's going to be strong in the Lord. And they just like, and but when the angel took off through the fire that they had burning, it's like, whoa, that was God. I wrote it down. It's for us to know, for us to see that angels do talk to people. Amen? Why should it stop today when we're so close to the end times that all the prophets talked about? There was more talked about Daniel during this time than any other time. Or uh, put a lot. We were not left out. By angels, by visions, Ananias, Jesus appeared to him and said, I want you to go to that street called Straight, and I got a brother Saul's there, and he argued with Jesus. Uh, how about if you had a vision, Jesus told you to do something, you'd start, say, hey, 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 this is Saul we're talking about. He's ISIS. He's killing people. Throwing them in jail. Whole families going in just jerking them out of their homes. This was bad. I don't know if it's as bad as what's going on over there now, but it was bad. Well, I know. They were getting killed. Being stoned. And Jesus appears to a guy. How many know when Jesus wants to appear to you, he appears to you? So that's another way. Now, how much of this should you pray for? I think you need to pray earnestly that God would use you, whatever call you have, and God would make it known unto you, whether through the presbytery, I think you really want to run it by people that are spiritual. And don't run it by your neighbor next door that hasn't been to church in six years, but he thinks he's spiritual. Have a church you can go to, and hopefully this church, it does enough praying that it will have a... a a good opportunity to lay it out and say yes the spirit of God witnesses to that and everybody has a different way that the spirit of God witnesses to that and let me let me say this by impressions and I'm going to leave you with this so I don't know if any of you wrote any of this stuff down there is only eight Nope. That's okay. 
but in Romans 8 16 the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit and this is impressions there's no words involved you just feel impressed and you and you, it doesn't go away it's impressed the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God do you know that same impression that you know you're a child of God and you're forgiven I give you more scriptures but we're out of time but so those are eight ways by prophecy tongues, interpretation, still small voice, audible voice, by angels, by visions, by dreams Joseph had a dream wise men Joseph and the wise men had dreams Joseph had a dream that he was supposed to marry Mary, <laughs> marry Mary and So different ones have had dreams. And the wise men were saying, don't go back that way because Herod will kill you. And impressions. And the reason why I go over this today is a lot of you are led differently. If I just stayed on one, you might miss a few Sundays and not realize that, hey, this is where God uses me. He actually is using me and it is real. Now I want to say this, that impressions, you might, God might use you in three different, four different areas in speaking to you and through you for the body of Christ. I think this, I think many times we have a lot of impressions that are from God, but I think many times we have impressions for other people that we hold to ourselves, and are, uh, are not the the impressions for the other person. Well, I figured they were going to get it in the Lord. You figured. You might have probably figured wrong. Maybe. That they needed you, and that's why the impression was given to you, to either confirm what they're feeling or tell them that they would have a clue. Remember, Timothy, the gift that was put into you. Don't lay it down but pick it up and use it. And you were clued in by the elders. And they told you what you are to do by the Spirit of God because they're always fasting and they're always praying. I'll tell you how you can tell who an elder is. Find out who's fasting. Find out who's praying. Find out who's really pressing into God for other people. And then you'll know. Amen? You'll know. So I hope today it clarifies some things to you, pushes you in the right direction. Amen. So what are you going to do? You're going to start desiring what God has for you. And the, th the first thing you're going to do is say, God, I know you use me over here. I know you use me strong here. But how about here in these areas? Is there not one for me? Is there not one for me? You know it would be so cool? Like I said, when somebody is just praying in tongues and you can hardly hear them, that you would scoot over and say, I know everything you're saying. Where's those people at? Where's those people at? See how needed it is? The body of Christ is crippled, and they are a barbarian to themselves. That's why we need to be earnestly desire and say, Lord, I think this is needed in the church because I don't know of anybody that is really interpreting what needs to be interpreted. So, Lord, to help the body of Christ, if you can use me in this area and it's truly a gift, please use me in this area. You have not because you ask not. So, Lord, I really want you to help me and this is what God said to David's son. He says, Lord, there's so many people. Solomon, remember that? There's so many people. How should I govern them? He was already, and the Lord says, because you didn't ask for riches, because you didn't ask for me to kill your enemies, because you didn't ask me for anything but for my people, 
I'm going to give you more wisdom than any man ever had. Amen? I'm going to give you all these things because you are seeking me for what's good for my people. People were came all around the world just to hear him talk because of his wisdom God gave him. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it? Don't we see that need in the church that we need people that are earnestly seeking the Lord? So this week, we know that no doubt God wants to use you in a supernatural way, some way. Seek the Lord that if nothing else, somebody that spiritual will be able to confirm in your heart or let you know. Do you know something? God really blindsided me when I was called to be a pastor. He really blindsided me because all I saw myself is one of the elders to count the offering, to, to scrub the floors and take care of the church. I was never saw myself as a pastor. And I think people are called to do things that they never see themselves doing. And God says, oh yeah, the church is crippled because the gifts aren't working. But oh yeah. I say, really? Never saw myself as a teacher. It's considered myself too unlearned, too ignorant to even help any of you or inspire you. But yet today I feel like I am inspiring you to push towards the Lord. And don't be closed mind to the Bible, but be careful. And that's where you surround your people with good counselors in the spirit.